Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the worst card game ideas in history. Now for this list, it's going to be, you know, if it's a bad property, if it was executed poorly, and if they just have properties that are blended together that shouldn't be blended together, basically. So we're going to start off with a very, uh, very bad one. I've actually done an unboxing of this, and it's the Bla uh, Beyblade trading card game. Now, when you take a show all about spinning tops and you want to make it into a card game, that's just a bad idea. First of all, Beyblades, it's a show about spinning tops. Okay, it's already a dumb concept in itself, and then they're going to make it into a card game. So for this card game, it's based off colors, and it's it's a train wreck. It's a train wreck trying to get through the game. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I don't know how to explain it. Um, I bought a few starters from Walmart. They were a dollar ninety nine or something like that. Me and a buddy of mine we played the game and just just everything is bad. It's almost as bad as card games that just do copy and paste or they're just rock paper scissors. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what all to say. You have to play the game to fully understand how speechless I am about how bad it is. If you like Beyblade, well, sorry, that's just my opinion. So next we're going to move to one that was never released. It was going to be made by Score, so yes, it is an anime game. And, um... It's based off an anime that was mildly popular, from what I remember. It may have been really popular for in some other areas, but from what I remember, it was mildly popular. And it was the Death Note trading card game. Now, Japan got one, and it's not the same thing as what we were going to get. The company that wanted the card game made told Score that they don't want any death and no notebook writing. It's just, just to be a mystery card game nothing else. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of it where death and note are in the name, meaning you have to have death in it and in the notebook writing like on the show. I've actually never seen it, but that's just from what I understand in reading about it. So if you take those two out, then what are you left with? I mean, there's there's not a whole lot you can do with the property. It's like taking Dragon Ball Z and then saying you can't use energy attacks, nobody can die and there's no fighting whatsoever. It, it would be just like that. So, I mean, what would be the point in making it then? <clears throat> so, anyways, we're gonna move to the next one. Uh, if you're familiar with Animayhem, it was the first time Dragon Ball Z was in a card game. And it was a compilation of all sorts of different animes in a game. Well, around that same time there was another game, very similar, was not very mainstream. And it was Anime Madness. Um, why it didn't succeed, it had very few properties and they weren't really well known. They had a few from the Anime Him, but it just it w it couldn't hold up because Anime Him was superior. It, it wasn't execution or anything, it just, when there's something else out there that's the exact same type of thing, has a lot of the same properties and more, and has more to offer to players than the players are going to go with that. So, not much can be said about uh, Anime Madness because there's not a whole lot that I've found that I can really read on. So, anyways, next we're going to move to Dragon Booster. Now, if you know Score, this is pretty infamous with Score. This is one of the biggest mistakes um, that this has just ever been made. If you don't know what Dragon Booster is, Dragon Booster is a animated show about these people that ride dragons, but they don't really look like dragons. They look like maybe like lizards that run. And um, so they made the card game. They basically made it a racing card game. Uh, it also had the see-through uh, card, kind of like uh, Redekai and Hecatomb, although Hecatomb was more popular than any other card game that has the uh, see-through card design. 
So anyways, Dragon Booster gets mass produced. I'm talking tons and tons and tons. Uh, Walmarts and other places buy this product, so they all think it's going to be a hit because Dragon Ball Z card game was a hit, and everything else by score is a hit. So they think, okay, let's order the product and put it out. Um, and see, that's the problem with with stores not knowing the product and putting it on the shelves. That's when you get clearance markdowns. That's like uh, Card Fight Vanguard. That's why you don't see it at Walmart and Target anymore. It does not sell well there. That's why you have to go to local sh uh, shops like um, your local card store, hobby shop, etc. And uh, so Dragon Booster, they, they put it out, it doesn't sell, so then they end up shipping it all back to score. So they were stuck for that with that for a while, excuse me. And it had to be shipped to, uh, I think it was like India and just a few other countries to push most of it out. It, it's a big failure. The card game is ridiculous when you look at it. So the next thing is by a company that I don't really consider to be much of a trading card company. They usually stick with just sports. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about Panini because they're, they're new. <laughs> they're new to the trading card scene. I'm um, talking about Topps. You know, Topps has been producing sports cards for years, you know. That's one of the first people you think of when you think of sports cards. Anyways, they have this series called Attacks. So, um, I've played one set. So let me go over all the different sets that there are. And you can actually have some of these go against other series in, in this set. So, okay. So you have baseball, football, soccer, hockey, cricket, WWE, Star Wars, Doctor Who alien attacks, uh, and Marvel Heroes. I, I don't know if I said Star Wars. If I didn't, then there's Star Wars. So anyways, you have this game with all these different licenses. So you, you're probably thinking Doctor Who and Star Wars. What a combination. You know, I could have fun with that or Star Wars and Marvel. Well, it would be pretty cool except for this card game is not very well made. Um, basically, you have an attack and a defense. Now, how this is, is you don't have a hand, you don't have a deck. So you're thinking, how do you play? Well, you put the cards face down on this mat, and you flip one over, and your opponent flips one over, so you do it at the same time, and you compare the values to see who wins. That's the game. And it's only 20 cards, so... I actually have a WWE uh, Slam Attacks starter, and I played the game with my friend, and I think he and I agreed that this is probably the worst card game to play. It was bad. Um, I think I'd rather play Dragon Booster than that, or play the or play uh, Scores version of Death Note if it were to ever had been released. It's bad. Um, the next thing we're going to get to is that I want to talk about are um, basically TV show card games. So these two are Survivor and, where was it, 24. Um, Survivor and 24, both very popular shows. Survivor being reality TV and 24 being a series on Fox, I believe. Um, 24 being a great hit. I guess they had the idea to make this into a card game. Um, I I just don't see how 24 transitions into a card game. It's a great show, I understand, but a card game, I don't see it. Um, Survivor, you know, I don't know who comes up with these ideas. I don't know how they see, you know, oh, 24, let's make that into a card game. It works out just so well. I don't see it. And Survivor, no. No. You should not make card games based off TV shows where it does not transition well. Now, there are situations where it does work, you know, like different animes and, you know, j just stuff like that. That can transition over very well. But then there are some that don't, and that's what the next one is. The next one is Case Closed. Now, if you saw... 
my uh, unboxing of that, I kind of didn't have a clue what all was what. Well, I had all that sorted out finally, and it's not that I don't want a case-closed card game. It's just a trading card game is not the thing it should be. The way that the game is, is it plays more like it should be something where all the... It should be almost like an LCG where all the cards come in in one set, and you just play from there, because it almost plays like a board game style. And, uh, you know, I, st when stuff like that is marketed as TCG, it's the wrong market, you know? I mean, it's like trying to m market NASCAR to a fan of football. I mean, I know that's real off and real strange, but you just don't do it. You just don't market things like that. Speaking of weird marketing, uh, let's get to the next thing. We have card games with the Quick Strike engine. Now, there's three games that have that. It started off with Shaman King, which is a terrible dubbed anime, uh, but it's a very interesting concept. Also, it includes Avatar. Yes, I'm talking about Avatar that you see on Nickelodeon, not the movie. And then we have Pirates of the Caribbean, the movie. Yes, so all three of these cards run on the same Quick Strike engine, which has the basically the two-sided card, and you pull the top of the card out, and it gives you a special attack, and it varies on each different card. Well, with this Quick Strike engine, you can basically play these against each other. Once again, like I was referring to at the beginning of the video, it's just a mixed match of licensing. I don't think anybody wants to play Pirates of the Caribbean against Shaman King or Avatar against the Pirates of the Caribbean. Not only that, it's just not a good game. It just, it's not crea it's not creative looking. And the mechanics just, it's just not all there. And that's a problem, so that's why, that's why it failed. Speaking of not all there, why don't we get to Kids Next Door? <laughs> it makes me laugh just to think that Kids Next Door actually got a card game. It's an interesting kids show, but it's Kids Next Door. I, I, it just doesn't transition to a card game. It's another one of those games that doesn't transition. Like 24 and Survivor, it just does not transition over. Um, you know, when I was... I don't know how old I was when Kids Next Door came out, but I remember watching it and thinking, oh, that's a cool show. But never in my dreams did I imagine that Kids Next Door would turn out to be a card game because it just doesn't work. And just like the next few, it doesn't work. So the next one is Teen Titans. Teen Titans was a good show. Why it's a card game, I don't understand. When you have card games like Overpower, the Versus system, what do you need Teen Titans card game for? It's just gonna fall flat there's nothing else to say I mean when I can put Robin in a deck in versus system I mean why why am I gonna go to Teen Titans card game you know it's not even that good of a game why am I gonna go it only had two different sets you know there's there's no point in playing it and then we have Shaolin Showdown which is made by Wizards of the Coast I do like the show but the card game was basically just a magic clone and, you know, like I said, made from Wizards of the Coast, the people who made Duel Masters, which is their own version of um, teaching younger audience how to play Magic through Duel Masters. What is the point in having Shaolin Showdown when you have Duel Masters? It's, you're just overproducing the same thing with, with another license, and you have to pay for the license for Shaolin Showdown, so why have it? Uh, and then this next one. I don't understand who came up with the reasoning for this is a card game. And it's Austin Powers. Austin Powers, it's funny, you know, if you like just real stupid humor. I mean, it's Michael Myers. It's going to be real stupid humor. But if you like it, then that's, that's Austin Powers. Now, they made this into a card game. The mechanic is awful. The cards are terrible looking I mean the game's a disaster you can go on to Troll and Toad right now and get a starter deck for like 95 cents I 
kid you not. Go over to trollandtoad.com and type in Austin Powers, and you will see the starter decks for 95 cents. 95 or 99, something like that. But it's less than a dollar. That really kind of tells you something. <laughs> it's it's just a bad idea. You, Austin Powers of all things. Oh, man. And, you know, I'm still not done, so let's get to the next one. So, card games based on online properties. And what I mean by that is online games, and you decide, hey, let's make a card game based on that. So the first one is Club Penguin, made by Disney, and I don't like Disney. I don't like them in the least. So when I heard that Club Penguin just absolutely failed, I just laughed. I knew it was going to fail from day one. The kids that play Club Penguin only play online. They don't want to play the card game. Don't make a card game and, you know, and say, hey, play it, you know, get off from the online and play this. They're not going to. It's not going to happen. The next one is Neopets. Neopets was wildly popular, so I could kind of see why they wanted to make a card game. But it's Neopets. It just does not transition well. It's not like Pokemon, where it makes great sense to make a card game for it. Neopets just does not work the same way as Pokemon does. Just It just doesn't. Then we have Maple Story. I don't know too much about Maple Story, but um, the game is just really badly designed. Um, as as far as being a printed, now I guess the the online one may work well, you know, because it's an online thing once again. But the printed TCG did not do well, and it's just another one of those times that online things should not come to paper form. And then last is Free Realms. I did a unboxing of that, and I paid a dollar for it for a starter deck shipped. That was it. One dollar. That's all that came out of my PayPal. One dollar. So, I think that should say enough. Next thing I want to get to Power Rangers Action Card Game. I like Power Rangers. I have since I was a kid. I don't really watch it anymore, but I like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So when I heard that they were in a card game, I said, all right, I'm going to go buy the starter deck so I can learn how to play. And I unboxed them, and then some booster packs, which I also opened. And um, I decided, okay, I'm going to learn the game. Well, it's basically rock, paper, scissors, and a dice roll. Die roll, excuse me. It's it's really, it's just a real cheap rock, paper, scissors, you know, put it on the shelves quickly because it has a brand name. And that I, it's just lazy and it's just, it's just not good. Although the cards look good. I, I like the, the art on the cards, but otherwise there's nothing to it. Next is the Tomb Raider collectible card game. I know I don't like... I don't care for Tomb Raider. I never really have. But when you market something as a collectible card game and it's not, don't market it as that. I'm pretty sure I unboxed it on YouTube. I th yeah, I did. Basically, it sets up more like, like a board game, like Case Closed. And it's Tomb Raider. But the problem that... The thing that bothers me the absolute most is the fact that they just take PS1 screenshots for most of the cards and put them on the card. I don't like that. I don't like when games do that. When you take PS1 screenshots, it looks bad. I, it looks bad because you're having two different resolution qualities on the card. And it, it looks off. It just doesn't look right. It's like when, when card games use really bad CGI, you know of a creature and you can tell it's so fake you know that there was no no artist behind it you know drawing it up and so on and so forth you know it just it it looks bad it's lazy <sighs> and then the next thing oh I hate to even have to talk about this I've done a lot of unboxings of this I've invested very little money and I've gotten so much out of it actually with the next two as a matter of fact but the next one is Redakai. 
I, I like the whole see-through card thing, but it just doesn't work. The cards are always nice quality. They're that real tough plastic, so you can't just ruin it by getting soda spilled on it or something like that. You just you can run it underwater and it cleans it off and looks just like it did before. But Redekai just it didn't play well. I mean, you set three guys down, you can put some creatures over it, play some spells, but when you have to buy all this extra stuff, you know, so nobody can see what your deck is, so they don't see what you're going to draw next and so on and so forth and when booster packs are above $4, people don't want to invest in that. You know, I'm sure a lot of these people that were wanting to buy into Redekai were probably Yu-Gi-Oh players or Magic players or Pokemon players. Those games already cost enough as it is, you know. They thought maybe this would be about the same price and maybe they could afford to lay off a Pokemon booster pack and buy a Redekai one instead. Well, that wasn't the case. When you charge more than $4 for a booster pack, people aren't going to go to your game. When starter decks are like $20 and regularly they're less than that, which they've kind of gone up in years, but back then it wasn't like that. But people can't afford to do that. So if you can't make your price competitive, then you have no way of earning money and no way of sticking around. And it didn't. I mean, it, it did better than Dragon Booster, but not a whole lot better. That's why I can still go to Walmarts and Big Lots and see Redekai stuff. Just sitting there. Nobody buying it. The next thing is Huntic. I bought so much of this at such a little price. I've got like 20 booster boxes for like 15 or $16, something like that. And I pulled every card from that set in like two booster boxes. <laughs> um, this is a game that falls under the same category as Tomb Raider and Case Closed. It plays more like a board game and less like a card game. But they were marketed wrong. Now if they would have made this as an LCG type thing and just released add-on sets, then it would have it would have been fine. It would I think it would have been a little bit better. You know, no booster pack pricing, none of that. Just put it all out as LCG. But that's not what they did. They went the wrong path, and they paid for it. The next thing was a recent unboxing, and I got to looking at the cards, and it's 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 bad. It, it was NFL Rush Zone. If you want to play NFL in a TCG form, but you want it for your kid, NFL Rush Zone is it but they will lose interest in it, I mean quickly, and they will be begging for Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, because that's what kids like, is Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. They will be disappointed that you bought them it, but at first they will be so happy because it's NFL, and you know they all have their favorite team, whether it's the Broncos and Steelers or whoever. And then they're going to be disappointed when they play the game, and you, you won't buy them a, a Pokemon booster pack. Or Yu-Gi-Oh. So. And then the next one, I can't even believe that this is an actual card game. But the SpongeBob SquarePants uh, game. The card game. Aquatic Amiibos. Amigos. Amiibo. <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob's an Amiibo. I think people would go crazy seeing that. A SpongeBob Amiibo. But it's Aquatic Amigos. Um, it's SpongeBob. He doesn't need to be a card game. You have marketed everything else. It's not like Kiss, where you can market into anything. You know, I wonder if there's a Kiss card game now. But you can't market it like that. SpongeBob is not, is not Kiss. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just a real basic game. It's it's almost a numbers game. It's it's bad. It's just real bad. And it had booster packs too. That's what's even worse. Then the last thing we have, and I don't, I don't like obvious clones. It's, it's bad. And this is Wizards or Wizard in Training. Excuse me. <laughs> I have never seen something want to be something so bad in my life when it comes to card games. Now, some of you are probably going to try to type in the comment section, well, Duel Masters wants to be Yu-Gi-Oh! No, Duel Masters made fun of Yu-Gi-Oh! That was the whole point. It was Wizards' way of making fun of Yu-Gi-Oh! Taking all the seriousness that Yu-Gi-Oh! tried to have, like 
going to the shadow realm and playing a card game and you die if you lose and stupid crap like that. That was it's stupid. That's why they had the the whole kaijudo battles in Duel Masters, you know, to kind of make fun of it and how everybody had serious expressions and Shobu's main villain for the first season was always so uh what's the word I want to use? He was just always so evil, so angry. You know, just he was just a dick, like like Kaiba. So that was the whole point. It was just to make fun. But Wizard in Training is just an obvious Harry Potter ripoff. I mean, they have a set for potions. They have a, the base set for just wizards. It's it's a mess. It's a train wreck. It's like, hey, we're not Harry Potter, but if you like Harry Potter, you can play this. Even though Harry Potter had a card game, which actually had a pretty good following for a while. I don't know if people still follow it, but from what I remember, it was pretty popular. It, it surprises me. I don't have too much of the Harry Potter TCG. Um, I don't dislike it. I really haven't been able to play it all that much. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. But Wizard in Training, it just, it looks like a bad Harry Potter knockoff, and there's just so much that shows that it is. So anyways, guys, that's all for my worst card game ideas. So just go ahead and Leave a comment if there's a really bad card game that I missed that you want to talk about. Please put it in the comments, and if I have any knowledge of it, I'll talk about it. If not, I'll probably look it up and talk about it with you anyways. So anyways, guys, until next time, I will catch you all later.